Okay, so now that we've checked the distribution of our running variable, and we've seen that there's no manipulation going on here, um, we can proceed to see if there's a discontinuity in our outcome across the running variable. This is the thing we care about the most. We want to see if there's a weird gap in the exit exam scores um, across our entrance exam around that cutoff. So to do that, we just make a plot. So we'll insert a new chunk here and say ggplot. Um, our data set is tutoring again. Um, with our aesthetics, we still want our running variable on the x-axis. So this is going to be x equals entrance exam. But on the y-axis now, we don't want to put tutoring or the other stuff we've been putting. We want our outcome variable, which was called something. So if we go to tutoring, it's called exit underscore exam. So that's the column we want to put on the y-axis, exit exam. And we can color by tutoring just so that we can see the, the points if somebody got participated in tutoring or not. And then we can say geom point to actually show the points. And if we plot it now, we should see something that looks like that. Um, this is a really basic plot. We need to add a couple things to it to make it more interpretable. Um, but you can see that there is kind of a discontinuity here. This is our 70 mark. Um, we can add a vertical line there. Um, what I'm going to do, it's slightly different from what I've done before, I think. Um, the order of these layers does matter to some extent. Like if I say geom point and then say plus geom v line um, x intercept equals 70, if I do that, this vertical line will go on top of the dots. So you can see like those, those dots right there are underneath the, the black line. If I move this and cut it and put it before geom point, and then add a plus sign, get rid of that plus sign. What that will do is it'll put the line down first and then it'll put the dots on top of the line. So now those dots are on top of the line instead of underneath it. Um, doesn't really matter which way you do it. If you want to kind of emphasize the line, put it on top. If you just want to say there's a line back there, stick some dots on it, that works too. Either way works, it just uh, makes a tiny difference there. Um, we have some overplotting issues right here that you see just big clusters of red. Um, so we can fix some of the overplotting by shrinking the points, by making them more transparent. We probably don't want to jitter here because um, if we move points up and down, that matters. That's going to mess up the exit exam value. And if we move points left to right, that's going to mess up the entrance exam value. So we can just shrink them and make them transparent. So we can say size equals like 0.5. Um, alpha equals 0.5, make them a little bit invisible. 0.5 might be too small. Let's try 0.75. Neat. That looks cool. Um, so we've got our line, we've got our points. But what we care about the most is, is there a gap right here around the cutoff? So we want a line. Um, in this case, we'll just do a simple parametric line. Um, based on a regression model um, to see if there's a gap at 70. So to do that, we can say plus geom smooth. If we just do regular geom smooth, we should see two different lines there. Um, but it's kind of wiggly and curvy because it's using low S. It's not using a parametric formula. This is the non-parametric moving average based on the windows. Um, so we don't necessarily want that. Um, what we can do instead is specify the method we want to use. We can say method equals LM for linear model. So now we should get two straight lines right there and right there. Beautiful. That worked. And conveniently, um, it's showing a line, or it, it shows the line, it splits it by this color here, um, which is nice. This only is happening correctly here because this is a sharp design. Um, so we've split, like technically this should be a line for anybody who scored less than 70 and scored more than 70. Um, right now, what it's really showing is people who used tutoring and did not use tutoring. In this situation, those are the same because this is sharp, um, a sharp design. But if this was fuzzy, this would be incorrect um, because the gap that we want to see is not people who use tutoring, people who did not use tutoring. It's people who scored less than 70 or more than 70. 
And so what I like to do is I actually like, while this did work, hooray, that's nice. Um, I like to actually add two different smooth lines just to make sure that it's showing those lines based on test scores, not based on the program use. So to do that, um, inside Geom Smooth, I can actually tell it to not use the regular tutoring data set. I can tell it to use a different, ver a different data set. So to do this, we're gonna tell it to use a filtered version of tutoring. So we're gonna say filter, and then we're gonna say tutoring. But this line is going to say, like we're gonna filter for rows where entrance exam is less than or equal to 70. So if I plot this now, we should only see one line. Okay, we only see the less than 70 people. Um, but we want to see the more than 70 people too. So if I just copy the same geom smooth, add a plus sign there, paste it there, we're going to change it so that we're only going to look at data where the entrance exam is greater than 70. So now if I plot that, we should get two lines. This is identical to what we had before when we just had a regular geom smooth. But this is more accurate, even though it was the same because um, these are lines based on the test scores. It's not a line based on whether or not they use tutoring. So this is technically what you're supposed to do is have two separate lines there. Um, and there we go. So we have a gap, um, which is good. So now our goal is to measure the size of that gap. And we're going to do that parametrically and non-parametrically and do a whole bunch of different ways to see how big of a gap there is right there around the cutoff.